quite shaped one again. Now for question 14. The diagram shows a bond present in a molecule of COCl2. Gives you the diagram. What's the shape? It's going to be trigonal planar. Um, carbon has got three bonding pairs, no lone pairs, and therefore the answer is D. Right, so I now need to work out some oxidation states for these, which statement is correct. So let's go through this. So the oxidation number, this is a peroxide, the oxidation number of hydrogen is plus one and another oxygen is minus one. Hydrogen there is plus one and oxygen in water is minus two and elemental oxygen is zero. For here, you've got the elements there and water we've already worked out as being plus one and minus two. So hydrogen is reduced in both reactions. That's not correct, is it? Because nothing happens to hydrogen here. Hydrogen is reduced in any one of the reactions. Not correct, because hydrogen is oxidised in this reaction. Oxygen is oxidised in both reactions. Um, again, not correct, because oxygen is reduced in this reaction. Oxygen is oxidised in only one of the reactions. That's the correct one, because it's oxidised in this reaction, but not this reaction. So the answer to 12 is D, and of course, uh, this reaction here is an example of a disproportionation reaction. Okay, so we're now on to moles for question 13. 0.01 mole of barium is added to 500 centimetres cube of water. Equation shown below. What statement is correct? Okay, so, um, the number of hydroxide ions formed is uh, that number there. Well. That can't be right, can it? Because for every one barium, um, one mole of barium, I make two moles of hydroxide ions. So this number will be times two. The volume of hydrogen gas produced is 0.24, measured at room temperature and pressure. Well, what volume of hydrogen gas would I produce? The volume is going to be equal to the number of moles, which is 0.01, times 24,000, um, which is going to equal 240. So that's not correct there. Uh, the concentration of barium hydroxide formed is 0.02. Let's have a look. I'm going to form 0.01 mole of barium hydroxide. Concentration is equal to moles divided by the volume times a thousand which is equal to 0.02 so the answer is c okay which statement is not correct for a system in dynamic equilibrium well it's a the concentration of the products and reactants are the same they're not the same the position of equilibrium can be over to the left, over to the right. It's not 50-50 reactants and products. So the answer is A. What is the systematic name for the molecule shown below? Well, I've got one, two, three, four, five carbon. So it's got to start pent. Pentan, um, carbon number one, one O, And then that's one, two, three, four. So four methyl pentan one O um, is going to be C. Right, so now I want to be to predict which molecule has the highest boiling point. So I'm looking for the longest chain um, effectively for this one. Um, and hopefully you can see uh, you've got pentane, pentane, so five carbons, four here, um, heptane there is going to be seven carbons so that's going to be my longest chain so the answer is B, 16B. Uh, right, so uh, which statement is correct from the following gives me a reaction. So first of all if you work out the number of moles in that which is concentration times volume over a thousand that comes to five times ten to the minus three moles. It, for every one of those, you need three of those. So three times five times 10 to the minus three moles of that you need. Um, uh, so if you do that, let's do that. Uh, three times five times 10 to the mi minus three 
gives you 0.015 moles. Um, and then to, they told you the concentration of sodium hydroxide. So we know the volume is equal to moles, sorry about the board, divided by concentration times by a thousand. If you do that, you've got 0.015 divided by 0.6 uh, times by a thousand, which gives you 25 centimeters cubed. So the answer, if we get back, is going to be, whoops, the answer is going to be A. There we go. Okay, so chemists dis uh, determine some properties of the two substances, C and D. Results are shown below, and it wants me to, to tell the structure and bonding. So... This means it conducts when solid and when molten, is not soluble in water and has got a high melting point. That suggests, because it's not soluble in water, that suggests it's going to be giant metallic. But this one, again, it's got a high melting point, doesn't conduct when a solid, but will when molten and is soluble in water. So that suggests it's giant ionic. So the answer to 18 is going to be D. Question 19, then you need to use your ideal gas equation for this one, and it wants me to find the number of moles, so N is equal to PB over RT. So, um, PB, so let's have a look. Um, that is going to be my pressure in Pascals, and this is my volume. They give it to me in the right units um, of Pascals and meters cubed. So, Based on that, it looks like it's D divided by R, which is that, and T, which is that. So the answer is D. And finally, for the odd multiple choice, which statement explains why the rate of reaction increases when the temperature is increased? Um, so let's have a look at this. The activation energy for the reaction decreases. Uh, no, the activation energy stays the same for temperature. Uh, only decreases when you put a catalyst in. Uh, activation energy for the reaction increases. Well, that's got to be wrong. Activation energy isn't going to speed up when it's higher. The proportion of molecules exceeding the activation it decreases, the opposite. So the answer is going to be D. The proportion of molecules exceeding the activation energy, energy increases.